Hi, I'm Aubrey Adams, and I'm sitting with Dr. Christine Miller. And Dr. Miller is going to explain to us her background, her research, how she's a medical advisor for Mom Strong, and then the connection between marijuana and psychosis. Yes, I've been studying the neuroscience of schizophrenia for about 30 years. And, you know, when I emerged from academia, I became aware that our nation was embracing a drug, marijuana, that caused the very disorder that I had dedicated my career to. So, you know, what I've been doing is trying to educate the public and legislators and law enforcement about the connection, the causal connection between marijuana use and psychosis. The evidence is strong. Uh, many of these studies have been done in other countries because they have a better network set up for epidemiology, not because it's, it's legal in those countries, but because they have the ability to do the epidemiology better than we do. And the uh, types of studies, there are hundreds that have shown a connection with marijuana use, but the types of studies within that body of knowledge that illustrate a causal connection um, include the dose response effect. So the more marijuana use you, you engage in, the more potent the product, the more likely a psychotic outcome. If you're using moderate strength uh, marijuana products, which would be a THC concentration about 15%, your risk for schizophrenia goes up about fivefold. The second type of evidence has to do with, you know, administering purified THC in the clinic, and they have done these studies, one in the U.S. and uh, four in Europe, where they, you know, found that a moderate dose of pure THC could elicit psychotic symptoms within the course of the day in the clinic. And these were in individuals who had no family history of psychosis. Um, so 40% would, would show psychotic symptoms. And fortunately, they were transitory and isolated. Uh, but if those individuals were to continue using, the, the people they selected were moderate users, maybe once a month they had used it. But if they were to continue using and develop a heavy use, you know, become a cannabis, have, develop a cannabis use disorder, um, then they were, would be at great risk of having a true psychotic break about um, probably about 35 percent of those individuals that those are the statistics would go on to have a constellation of psychotic symptoms happening at once and once that occurs um, it turns out that marijuana is the worst of all recreational drugs that can trigger a psychotic break 50 percent will go on to have chronic psychosis you know, eight years out, these were very large studies conducted in Europe, over you know, about 24,000 subjects in total, you know, very large. Um, so it's marijuana, you know, is worse than um, the next most likely drug to lead to chronic psychosis with, am with amphetamine, about 30%, and going on down from there, LSD, PCP, cocaine, all a lower percentage. Um, and then, you know, the other pieces of evidence um, include the fact that uh, marijuana advances the age of onset of schizophrenia, much like carcinogens advance the age of onset of a suite of cancers. Um, you can see structural changes in the brains of individuals in brain scans, MRI scans, and fMRI scans where they follow the same subjects over time longitudinally so they can compare their baseline brain structure to what they look like, you know, if they begin using marijuana and compare those to the same age group set of people who did not begin using marijuana and they see changes in brain regions relevant to schizophrenia that could help explain some of what we see. But that doesn't mean that if you begin marijuana use later, after your brain is finished developing, and that actually is pretty late. It's later than a lot of people think. It's in the late 20s, and so this magical age of 21 that the states have selected as being safe for people to begin using marijuana, you know, that's actually not based on science. Uh, people who you begin using in their late 20s and even in middle age can develop psychosis. So it doesn't always have to do with 
changes in brain structure that occur during development. You know, the, the causes of psychosis in terms of structure versus, versus neurochemical changes is very complex and it's going to take a long time to figure it out. So, um, you know, in my mind, there's no doubt that marijuana is causal. The constellation of these studies together, you know, illustrate that, um, you know, there is proof for causation. No one study by itself uh, can be uh, definitive, but collectively they are definitive. And then what do you say to the people that say people are just self-medicating, the psychosis is already starting? Yes, and that was a st type of study I, I neglected to mention. They did prospective studies in Europe. They followed teens from age 13 on, the best study did, where they evaluated thousands and um, they conducted neuropsychological testing to see who had a psycho psychosis liability at the beginning and then followed them and found that, you know, about five or six years later, those who had um, a psychosis liability in the beginning uh, were no more likely to begin, not significantly more likely to begin marijuana use than those who did not, but those who were normal in the beginning and began marijuana use were significantly more likely to become psychotic than those who did not begin marijuana use. So that is a very strong piece of evidence against self-medication. The other fact is that they've looked at families and they found that those who carry a family history of schizophrenia uh, are no more likely to develop cannabis use disorders. So the, the genetics there do not support, the family history pedigree studies do not support that there's a connection between schizophrenia risk and substance abuse risk. That's another piece of evidence. Uh, the final piece of evidence I would consider in terms of that question is that in the majority of cases, um, you know, there is uh, no family history of schizophrenia. And no matter what the cause, you know, they, it could be marijuana, it could be they had a you know, head trauma when they were young. There are a variety of different environmental factors. Um, but the majority of cases, 75% at least, have no family history of schizophrenia. And so that means, you know, this is a very complex environmental genetic interaction that occurs that uh, leads to a schizophrenia outcome. And self-medication um, is also not evident because we know that those who have psychosis and are marijuana users, if they quit using, they get better, and if they, you know, relapse to using, they get worse. So there's a sine wave that goes on, you know, that is very convincing in science when you see things track, you know, up and down together. That's very convincing that there's a causal relationship. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for explaining the link between marijuana and psychosis. Uh, you're very welcome.